Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Another video coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai Bar Shem Rakakodash. This is the daily edification, the daily exhortation. And um, today I'm going to address that uh, statement that um, uh, Deacon Asaph made in apologizing to, you know, Deacon Asaph of uh, IUIC, apologizing to uh, Great Millstone for calling us bums and pretty much every uh, derogatory name that they've called us in the past. Uh, recently, Deacon Asaph issued an apology, and he even went as far as to say to his members, you know, at the IUIC, not to ever call us bums again, because that's what they used to call us. I mean, they actually enjoyed calling us bums. So Deacon Asaph issued a edict to the congregation to not call us bums, you know, Great Millstone anymore. And I saw the video of him saying that. Uh, Apostle Elder Ramlab showed me the video yesterday on our way to camp. And the first thing that came in my mind when I saw the video and heard what he said was, well, what about the disrespect that was showed to the name of the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh, and his son's name, Yahweh Shai? What about the disrespect that was showed to the names of the Father and the Son by the head teacher you know, the head leader of IUIC, which is Nathaniel, who goes by the name Bishop Nathaniel. What about the disrespect there? And it's clearly on video, okay? It's clearly on video where the guy who calls himself Bishop Nathaniel is making fun of the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, which is in the ancient Hebrew, which is something that he denounces, something that he once taught meaning the names of the Father and the Son, uh, going back more than 20 years ago, today he denounces it, and he goes as far as to even make fun of it. And the point that I'm making is, when Nathaniel did that, when he made fun of the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son in the ancient Hebrew, that was his undoing, like I said in the last video. The reason why you got all these problems coming upon the IUIC, the number one reason is because of their disrespect for the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And for evidence of that, you can watch the video. If any of you brothers out there get the clip, please put it in the comment section where people can see the disrespect of the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son by the head leader of the IUIC, which goes by the name Bishop Nathaniel. And that's where all their woes came from, because you do not disrespect the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So my message to you, Asaph, if you should see this video, is instead of uh, focusing your apology to us, you should start with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, because you, you condoned it. You certainly didn't rebuke Nate for doing it, okay, which means you condoned it. So I think your apology should first go to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. And furthermore, you should stop teaching, you should stop teaching your congregation this most high in Christ nonsense. Because the name of the Heavenly Father is not most high, and his only begotten son is not Christ. You know this. Okay, for whatever reason, and the main reason you guys denounce the name is for filthy lucre's sake, you know that that is not the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Most High in Christ. You know the name, okay? So I think you should start with your apology there, okay? That's my message to you, Asaph. And what I got queued up here is... Uh, a video that I was watching now about the 
uh, tenth minute of this video, this guy goes into all the uh, c controversy surrounding the IUIC. And like I said, the main reason why all this is coming down upon them is their disrespect for the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay, so I'm going to play uh, a bit of this video and um, go into the scriptures. So here we go. So that silly stuff like this doesn't happen. Because every time, uh, like Judah right. Michael said, every time you turn around, like last year, one of their members shot. Now this guy here, you know, he, he has his platform, spiritual combat, whatever. But the reason why I'm showing this video is he's going to go into the controversies that has been circulating around the IUIC. The shit that has been attributed to them. And like I said, the main reason why all this, this, this shit is coming down upon them, and I'll say it again, is their blatant disrespect for the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay, so let me play on. Some uh, transvestite in the face, you know what I'm saying? Um, every they says that one of their members body slammed the girl in Vegas. Uh, they said one of their members pushed the girl out of a car or something. Crazy stuff. And it's like, why is this? Why is it always around your particular group? Why? Because of their disrespect for the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, starting with Nate. You just don't do that, man. You do not disrespect the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So, Asaph, that's where you should start with your apology, okay? Now, this is the book of Deuteronomy 28 and 58. It says this, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law, that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy power. So the Most High's name is glorious and is fearful, okay? His name is Yahweh, which means he is, okay? And his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior. And those are the names in the ancient Hebrew. And it's just like Elder Apostle Torah said, you mean to tell me the Heavenly Father is going to give us all these secrets pursuant to Amos 3 and 7 and not give us the secret of his name and his son's name? Does that make any sense? No, it does not. We have the names of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son. Okay? So don't listen to this group called the IUIC telling you that we don't have the names. As a matter of fact, let's go to one of the cornerstone scriptures, that being the book of... Uh, the book of Acts 4 and 12. And one of the reasons why we have the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son is so that the elect can be delivered. And we're going to let the scriptures speak it. Okay? And that's why all these woes, are, and, and that's just the beginning. Okay? Like I, like, well, begin with all the Apostle Tar on down. We told you that the Lord is going to visit that group. We told you that they're going to crumble like the wall that they built, which that's in the scriptures. That's in the book of uh, Ezekiel. They, they daubed, they built up a, a wall with untempered mortar. For those of you that know that scripture, well, at the beginning of their videos, they got the wall crumbling, then it forms IUIC. Well, they're going to crumble, and they are crumbling like that wall, Okay. <laughs> Uh, the book of Acts 4 and 13. Oh, 4 and 12. Right, 4 and 12. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the name has been given. The name has been given, and the name, or the names rather, are in the ancient Hebrew. Because the ancient Hebrew is the language of the heavens. How do we know this? When the Apostle Paul was knocked off the horse on his way to Damascus, what language did the Lord speak to the Apostle Paul in? He spoke to him in the ancient Hebrew. Let's prove this. So let's 
So it makes sense that the names of the Father and the Son would be in ancient Hebrew. And we do have the ancient Hebrew this day. Okay, we do have it in this generation. And it's all based upon faith. Okay, because this thing of ours to begin with was always based upon faith. And that's another thing that the IUIC made fun of us back in a few years ago. They called us a faith-based camp. As if having faith is, is, uh, is, is there's something wrong with having faith. This whole thing of ours is based upon faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Again, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please the Heavenly Father. So there's a very, there's a, man, there's a plethora of reasons why all this shit is coming down on the IUIC. But the main reason, and I stand by this, the main reason is because of their disrespect for the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay? Let me prove that scripture. Hebrew tongue, the language of the heavens. And you're going to tell me that we being the people of the Lord, the Hebrew Israelites, we're not going to have the language of the heavens when we're the favorite of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, the nation of Israel, especially beginning with the elect? Come on, man. Like I said, don't believe that for one second. Don't believe that we don't have the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And those are precious names. Those are the names that's going to deliver us from the coming wrath, man. And if you don't believe that, then you ain't in the faith, all right? You're not in the faith. And I, I emphasize the word faith because that's what this thing of ours is about. It's about faith. You go in the book of Ephesians 2 and 8, it says that this is a gift given to us. Faith is a gift given to us by Yahweh Barashim Yahushai. Faith even to believe in the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son for deliverance. Okay? And as you can see, IUIC, do not, they're not men of faith. Okay? That's why all this shit is coming down upon them, man. Acts 26 and, uh, and um, 14. And I'm going to go right to the point. Now, this is when the Apostle Paul, at the time his name was Saul. And he, he was on his way to persecute the Christians. Okay? Which, in the Hebrew, the, the word Christian is Mashiach, which means the anointed. So here's Saul on his way to persecute them, in ignorance, of course. And he gets knocked off the horse by, by Yahweh Shai. Okay? And... Um, this is what happens, uh, I, uh, Acts 26 and 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, okay, the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, this is Paul speaking, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus here, but it's in the Hebrew tongue. Jesus is not Hebrew. As a matter of fact, the letter J didn't come about till what, the, the latter part of the 1600s. Before it was Jesus, it would have been in the Greek, Iesus, okay? It would have been Iesus. The Lord didn't say, I am Iesus, because the Lord didn't speak Greek. He spoke in Hebrew, so the name in Hebrew would be Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior, and that's based upon faith. The belief in that is based upon faith. And I am Yahweh Shai, <clears throat> excuse me, whom thou persecutest, okay, whom thou persecutest. So the point I'm making here is the Lord spoke to the Apostle Paul in the ancient Hebrew tongue, and we have the ancient Hebrew tongue today. How do we know this? We go back to the prophecy, okay? It tells you in the scriptures, he that is wise would be, would be in, in uh, would, would uh, speak prophecy, would be involved in prophecy. So let's go to the prophecy. The book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. The book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Bear with me for a minute and get the verse. Here it is right here. I'm going to go right to the point. At the time this was written, when Isaiah came on the scene, this would have been a future prophecy, okay? 
Of course, this is a dark saying. This is a parable. And not everyone is going to understand this. Isaiah 19 and 18. In that day shall five cities in the land. We're in that day now. Shall five cities in the land of Egypt. And that's not talking about actual Egypt. That's talking about America, which is spiritually known as Egypt. Like I said, this is a dark saying. This is a parable. This is not meant for everyone to understand. This truth is not meant for everyone to understand. It's only for the elect. Okay? Shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan? Now, all you got to do is Google the language of Canaan, and you'll see the Hebrew symbols, because the language of Canaan is ancient Hebrew. So the prophecy says in the last days we would speak the ancient Hebrew language, beginning with the name or names of the Father and the Son, man. So what is this nonsense? We don't have the name. We don't have the ancient Hebrew. That's defying the prophecy. That's called, So you guys are basically calling the Heavenly Father a liar. And it is written, it's impossible for him to lie. He said, he, would, he said in the last days we would have the language of Canaan, man. In that day shall five cities in the, in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, which is the Hebrew language, and swear to the Lord of hosts, to swear to the Lord of hosts, which another word for swear is to take a vow. You must do that in the Hebrew, man. Because if you're going to pray to the Lord of hosts, you got to pray to him in the Hebrew. <laughs> you got to pray to him in the Hebrew. If you swear, meaning a vow, which when you come into the truth, that's what you're doing. You're taking on a vow. Okay? Some point in time in taking that vow, you're going to go to the language that the Heavenly Father deals with, which is the ancient Hebrew, the language of the heavens. I mean, that's just common sense, okay? But we're finding out something. In this Hebrew Israelite thing of ours, a lot of guys don't have common sense, okay? Common sense is not so common, all right? Let's read it again, man. Isaiah 19 and 18. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, that's the ancient Hebrew language, and swear to the Lord of hosts. Once one shall be called the city of destruction, because that's where America is heading to, destruction. The Lord is going to miserably destroy this place. And I wish it was today. I wish it was yesterday. Okay? I mean, I'm sick and tired of this fucking place, man. I really am, man. I am sick and tired of this fucking place. Okay? 19 verse. In that day shall there be an altar... To the Lord, and we've gone through the scripture many times. The altar represents the different camps. That's another camp scripture right there. Okay, and there are those that can't see it. Why? Because this truth is not given to everyone anyway. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord, and it shall be for a sign. So the ancient, the speaking the language of Canaan is part of that sign. Okay. The language of Canaan is the ancient Hebrew. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, which is America. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. Who is the oppressors? Just like the ancient e Egyptians were our oppressors. Guess what? The so-called white man is the modern day Egyptian. He's our oppressor, man. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Isn't that what's coming? A savior and a great one, which is Yahweh Shai? So you're going to tell me that Isaiah, the 19th chapter, is not relevant to today? That means you have no faith, man. That means you're not part of this thing of ours. But the point is there, brothers. The language of Canaan. So we got the Hebrew. Okay, we got it. All right? So... Again, going back to my initial point, <laughs> the reason why all this shit is coming down upon, <laughs> look at this wicked United States, it's the beginning of the end for you guys, man. You had your little run, as it is written, the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. You had your joy, but now it's coming to an end. Because like I said, and I've always maintained this, the Lord did not build the house of the IUIC. Psalms 127 and, and what is it, one, first verse. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain which built it. This IUIC is a labor in vain. And one of the main reasons is because you denounced the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. You made fun of it. Okay? You took it in vain. And that's 
one of the main commandments, thou shalt not take the name of the, of, the, of the Heavenly Father in vain. Is that not written? But to end this video, because I've said what I need to say, that's my response to you, Asaph. Okay? <laughs> Instead of apologizing to us, <laughs> you should make it right. And the way you do that is by teaching the correct names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son and denouncing this Most High and Christ blessed nonsense BS. And furthermore, that would be the total, dis uh, the total uh, dis dismantling of IUIC because the name IUIC means Israel, Israel united in Christ. That's a joke because first of all, the only ones that's going to be united is the elect of the nation of Israel and they're certainly not going to be united in Christ. So this whole thing is doomed, okay? Okay, Asaph? So that's my response to you. Take it for what it's worth, all right? Anyway, this the you know has been the end of the video, and I'll see you brothers in the next video. Shalom for now.